Hi friends, in this tutorial, we'll create a Spring Boot application along with uh, JDBC implementation. For this, I'm going to take reference of my website javainews.com. So go to the Spring section, Spring Boot. In one of the previous tutorial, we had implemented Spring Boot tutorials using Spring Data JPA, where uh, we had seen how to implement J uh, JPA for Spring Boot. In this tutorial, we'll be implementing the Spring Boot JDBC example. In one of the previous posts, we had created an application using uh, Java JDBC. We had seen what were the disadvantages of, of this. The main disadvantage is the amount of repetitive code. Then the error handling is more repetitive and complex. And the third part is care has to be taken to release the resources after the DB function has been performed. In the other post, we had seen the advantages of using Spring JDBC. In this chapter, we see how to implement JDBC using Spring Boot with MySQL database. So let us first have a look at why we should use Spring Boot JDBC. Here are the differences or the advantages of uh, first we have JDBC using Spring and then JDBC using Spring Boot. Uh, in uh, JDBC using Spring, multiple dependencies like Spring Context, Spring JDBC need to be specified. In uh, Spring Boot JDBC application, only a single Spring Boot starter dependency is required. This is how a Spring Boot application works. The other three advantages are mostly related uh, to how we configure the Spring Boot uh, JDBC application. Uh, when using uh, Spring, we have to create a data source bean. This can be either created using XML or Java config. But we have to always uh, configure a data source bean. In uh, JDBC using Spring Boot, uh, database bean gets initialized automatically if not mentioned explicitly. So if we don't create this data source bean, still uh, it will create it automatically. We'll see how this happens. If we don't want this to happen, then we'll have to set this property Spring dot data source dot initialize to false. This property is true by default. The template beans platform transaction manager JDBC template named parameter JDBC template must be registered for sure uh, for uh, Spring using JDBC uh, JDBC using Spring in uh, Spring Boot JDBC application it is not necessary to always uh, register these uh, template beans if these are not registered Spring Boot will register them automatically again we'll uh, see when we'll create the application. And the last point is, if any DB initialization scripts like dropping or creation of the tables uh, are created in the SQL file, this info needs to be given explicitly in the configuration file for a Spring application. But for a Spring Boot JDBC application, uh, if we specify uh, these in a file named as schema, uh, then platform.sql, then they will get executed uh, automatically. For example, we'll be creating a schema uh, platform name in our case will be MySQL. If we are using, uh, suppose, HSQL, then it will be HSQL here. So let's uh, begin with the implementation part and then we'll look at these advantages during implementation. We'll begin with the implementation part. For this, go to Eclipse and create a new Maven project. Next, we'll add the Maven dependencies. So, the dependency that we'll be adding will be the Spring Boot Starter JDBC, and also since we're using MySQL, so we'll be adding this MySQL dependency. Create the application.properties file and specify the data source properties in it. Uh, the data source bean will be created uh, automatically by using these properties file. So we don't have to create the data source bean ourselves. Next we'll create the schema-mysql.sql file. 
which will have the initialization scripts. Again, on application startup, this uh, initialization script will be run automatically by Spring Boot. Next, we'll create the domain class employee. Next, we'll specify the service interface. In the service interface, we have specified the various operations, the employee operations that we have to perform, like insert employee, insert employees, get all employees, get employee by id. We specify the service class implementation. Next, we'll create the DAO interface. The DAO interface will again have the various operations similar to the service interface. Next we have the DAO implementation. Uh, in the DAO implementation we can see that uh, we have not auto wired the JDBC template but whenever you, we use the get JDBC template uh, Spring Boot provides it the already uh, registered uh, JDBC template. Finally, we'll be creating the Spring Boot application class. In the project properties, Set the Java compiler compliance 1.8 if it is not already done so. So here in the Spring Boot uh, main class we create uh, employee instances and then pass this uh, employee instance reference to the various employee service uh, methods to perform the database operations. Next, we'll start the MySQL database. We'll now run this application. So we can see that our application has started successfully and it is storing the values in the database. So we go here. So the uh, records are uh, stored successfully. I hope you have understood this tutorial. Uh, the source code for this it can be downloaded from here. Thank you.